next creative, we're going to take this, this, some of this, and a belt sander, a, held, held, a handheld belt sander, and this, and we're going to make this. First off, I took the uh, spatula that I already had and I decided to trace it out here on cardboard because I knew I was going to make others, so I made a template for it, which you could trace directly onto wood itself. You see me cutting out the tracing that I did on the template to have the piece of cardboard, and then I put the piece of cardboard down on the wood, which you could have done directly with the spatula. Here I'm just cutting off a little bit of the end board because I didn't want to run right up to the end. I cut off. Um, I traced it about an inch and a half from the end or so, and here I'm just cutting that little piece off. Uh, once you do that, then you will just cut out what you need from the board and then trim around the drawing that you've already made on there, the outlines. Now I did this pretty much in three stages. I went and I trimmed uh, not real close to the line, a little bit out of the line, and then I went back and retrimmed closer to the line. I'm still getting the hang of this particular bandsaw and things like that. And so I went and um, step by step to do that. Here you can see me copying what is the curve of the spatula on its, let's say the flat side, how much lift or rise it has. Um, and I did this in two stages specifically because I felt it was easier to do um, once I had it on, you know, cut out in a pretty flat width wise template. And then here you see me just filling in the gaps with the pencil so that I can make it fit the way that I need to. It was a rough drawing, but I knew that I would be um, sculpting it down because this is more than just woodworking uh, as far as, you know, standard stuff goes. This is definitely uh, sculpting. And here you see me uh, trying to figure out the best way to cut this edge into it. It's got a little bit of variance, so you have to figure out what the best way is. And then I decided to start from the other end and come back. You have to really watch your fingers here because you're dealing with a very, very tight tolerance um, on the end where the spatula is itself. Now you'll see me running it actually backwards through the blade instead of cutting I'm actually using the blade to kind of sand it and that's the rough shape that you have there now once all that was done I still needed to finish shaping it and and final sand it so what I did is I took the belt sander and it's a handheld belt sander so I have one that has a lock on the trigger and I use these clamps to just put it in a jig and and hold it tight and then I turn on the trigger with the um, the lock that it has so it would keep going while I had it upside down um, and then I used 80 grit and I started roughing it out and then now you see me uh, doing it with 120 grit uh, sanding it down don't forget I have this at like 2000 speed um, it sped up 2000 times so what you're seeing in around six minutes is what took me uh, you know a better part of 40 minutes to do and then here I go back with 100 grit by hand just to finish sanding off some things I squared off the end and then I went and I started sanding with some 150 and then I go up to 220 sanding on this just trying to get it uh, as smooth as possible um, I even like to go back and reshape and resand. I, I go between grits a lot of times just because I find that is needed uh, sometimes. Here I'm actually using a razor blade to scrape it and then it makes it, it cuts all the little fuzzy hairs off. You can also spray water on it and then sand it with 220. But I do that a lot of times because it helps me see where the deeper sand marks are and I need to go back and actually sand them with um, you know 220 or 150 again to get those out of there. And here you see me just finalizing the, the overall shape as far as the handle and the, the um, tip of the handle. And then of course here I'm trying to refine the scoop on it so it's as even as possible on both um, symmetrically the sides and in the, the actual transition in the curve. So that was all part of it. And then I sanded for a while to make sure that the handle felt right in my hand. You just have to kind of do that to touch and feel. I wasn't trying to copy my original spatula completely. I was just trying to use it as a guideline. And then I go back and I use the blade to scrape it all again. 
that um, that's equivalent to using like a thousand grit. Here you see the butcher block oil that I'm using to coat the spatula with. Uh, it's ironwood from, I guess, Australia, it seems. My wife bought it on Amazon. I don't really know the quality of product, but you can see how it looks now with the poplar being oiled with the butcher block. And then I let it dry for a little while. And I was making sure, you know, that while I went, I was making sure there was nothing obvious that I needed to go back and sand because the oil will bring out details that you didn't notice before. And then here you can see it on top of my cutting board. This is a cutting board that I actually made from laurel wood in Chile, and we brought it back from Chile, um, South America with us. My wife was insistent on that. Uh, so I'll be refinishing that here in the near future. And then here's just a few final photos of how the spatula turned out after it was all oiled and dried. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it, especially for my first spatula.